Hello and welcome to another Oak Art with Linda E video. Today I will be making some Day of the Dead display art, starting with the largest one pictured here. I will show you a number of different material options that I have successfully used in the past to make these, to give you ideas on how to make your own. Then I will put together three different pieces and show you how I assemble them. For this first one, I'm using a photo storage box lid for the frame. I painted the interior of the box with a flat black latex paint. I glued a crystal fringe trim all the way around it, and I'm adding extra glue to support the heavier beads. Let that dry, and I can show you some of the things I found. Anything can become the backing for your piece. An old picture frame, that one I just grabbed, it's got Barbarella in it, but any kind of picture frame can become the backing for your piece. Say you want to take and do something a little unusual, you want to grab a child's face, a really cool ornate thing like that would go really well. Um, you can go little like this and do a let me see. Do a smaller face on it. You could take these little metal hearts out and add in crystals in place of them or little skulls or it would not be hard to swap them out for tiny skulls. Cigar boxes are something that I love to do um, like little shadow boxes in. You can pick them up really cheap. Um, they come in a bunch of different sizes. This is one that has a permanent lid inside of it, but also this whole inner frame comes out and now you have its lid and the box itself as an option and then you have these little boards on the inside that you can then use for something different and they come like this where they're really shallow uh, which side does this one open up anyway they open and you can put stuff in them oh i see it's nailed shut oh, that makes it hard <laughs> but lots and lots of different shapes and sizes and you can use um, pretty much any kind of thing to go in them. You can take, you can make like a little bust to go inside of them and you can orient them whatever direction you want. You can build a little diorama around them. You can grab, let's see, there's so many things you can use to build these little craft things. You can take, this is one of my bags of stuff I have saved. If you, if I ever have like a broken doll or something, I typically, or if they had a really funny smell to them, uh, which happens a lot at the flea market, the vendors used to save the broken dolls for me, and I would take them apart and save their parts. I have their, or I have a million arms and legs, because if a hand broke, I'd save the other hand, and I'd save the legs, and I'd save the head. Well, you can take this little wig, you can dye it, you can spray paint it, or you can replace it completely paint her face day of the dead, put the little head in the box, surround it with flowers, decorate the box, and how cute is that? You can take a little block and put it underneath of her to raise her up so she occupies more of the box. And you have got something really cute though. You can put her in this way and take the legs and attach them as the legs of the box which is adorable. Usually I'd put something a little scarier in there than a little kid. Um, but you've also got, I don't know if you see them as often as I do, but I find these old make your own angel type things and they work really nicely in the boxes and you can get more of a, more room for a diorama with the smaller ones. Um, I said I have all sorts of heads and arms and legs and stuff saved. A friend of mine gave me these and I thought they were really funny. I put them on the top, on the box as legs. And when you turn it upside down, it has the little, the little heads <laughs> as the legs. Those were funny. I did that one, did that on a box once. And, and it doesn't matter if the head is, is a cute kid or an adult, you can get away with it either way. But for this piece, I'm actually, let me get these out of the way again. Bear with me. I'm still pouring. Yes. I have a tendency to turn it off. I think I turned it back on. 
you guys move. And for the purposes of this piece, I'm going to be using, um, they're made out of a product called Liquiche. And they came out of a vintage doll mold that was given to me. Um, but I don't have a kiln and I don't really have any intention of ever doing porcelain. So they have sat in my, they had sat in my garage, but I have, let me see if I can find the two I was planning on using. Is that, <laughs> hold on, it's hard to tell them apart. Okay. So it's this and this. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to sit them in here just yet, but I will. They're going to go in here either this way. No, you can't see, can you? They're either going to go in here this way, which if I put them in the tall one, they're going to go one down and one up. And then I'm going to fill in all around them with different materials. This will be a mixed media piece. Uh, I guess I can sit it. It's not really going to hurt it. But if it goes this way, they'll go in like that. And they'll go just side by side if I end up wanting to hang it this way. I always dry fit things. The first, the first time I put them together, I dry fit them. Um, I just lay pieces in. And I'm going to take probably some burlap and I'm going to glue it into the background here. And um, then I'm going to paint it black and then brush over it maybe with silver to match this trim that's on the outside. Um, my other option is I have this stuff, which they call it um, Christmas netting. It's just this really lightweight plastic mesh that has like a, an iridescent glitter on it. It's folded over so you can't see. It almost looks like a really loose um, fishnet. And I may add some of that over top, but it's going to be a combination of those two. And then I have some skulls and I have some um, fiber or fabric that I can bunch together and, you know, kind of do their little outfits. Um, I mean, I'm probably not going to use the white though, because I'm, I'm thinking this is going to go a little bit goth. So it'll probably be more black fabrics. And I have like little pearl embedded materials that I can use as trims to kind of fake the look of a, a, a little outfit. Um, again, I also have them that are in black. Um, and that's what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, and I will show this one assembled and finished at the end. Uh, like I said, they're from uh, an old porcelain doll mold. And I just poured the liquiche into this section, just the front section of these. And that way I have a nice flat backed piece to use for a project like this. There's a rather large assortment of them. This one I actually kind of love. She is just the slightest bit sinister. Let's see if I can get the light there. She has got an interesting grin. She actually had teeth, but I carved them out because they were, they were creepy. <laughs> I did not like them at all. She's actually a little bigger scale. And maybe I will swap her in here. And then I'll fake like a dress here. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I'll use her in this one. And yeah, I think that might look cool. And I have the little skulls that can kind of go in and around. Yeah, I think this one's going to become the skull, but there's, there we go. I'm trying to force the camera to shift the white balance. There, you can see the face now for two seconds. For two seconds, you can see the face. <laughs> but to a very kind person on YouTube, the rest of this video will be full screen. I can see better and you can see better. And I don't have to worry so much that it's going to be um, a problem where I can't even get this silly, oops, can't even get this thing to focus. The glare seems to still be a problem. Anyway, it's better. Okay, so I'm going to start this with um, a coat of flesh color paint. And I know that seems counterintuitive since we're going to go back and make the face part white. 
but it seems like if I don't, no, I don't need that. Hold on, I need something to paint on so I don't get it all over my table. I think that'll do. Just piece of bubble wrap. Okay, and grab my brush. So I'm just going to go super easy, and I'm going to give, because this is very dry material that I'm working with. Um, you know what else you can use, though, now that I'm thinking about it? I'm sure you've seen them at flea markets. I, I have some, but they're in storage in a bin somewhere. They're the little porcelain face masks that you would hang on the wall. They usually don't have any eyes. Um, a number of the pictures that I'm going to show you off on the side of the screen here were made with those. Um, and I've actually set acrylic eyes in behind them, which made them look really cool. But um, I could not find the container in time to do this one. So I'm going to do this instead. Probably should have shaken this. I need to do that now. Put a little bit of paint in there. This is really porous. It's going to dry really quickly. And I don't want weird paint lines. So I have to go kind of fast. It's, it's a paper clay. It, it's just the way that they make the liquiche. It's so fine that they are actually able to suspend it in water. And it functions in the same way that um, porcelain slip does. And these are so much fun to make. And you can get really creative. You can borrow some inspiration from some of the thousands upon thousands of people who get all dressed up and go to the festivals for Day of the Dead on how you want to paint the faces. I used to even go as far as to like paint like a cemetery scene like across the forehead and I, I'll, I'll share pictures of some of the ones I've made in the past. I didn't take pictures of all of them actually. Um, just the ones that I thought turned out especially cool. Because this is really more more craft in my opinion and I take so many pictures of my art, the pieces that I sculpt and make that uh, I was kind of overfilling my camera <laughs> big time with pictures and I was actually having to delete them off of the camera's little card and um, I just decided, well, I guess I won't take pictures of everything I make because I will spend just as much time taking pictures as I do making this stuff and then I won't be able to make as much stuff. So. A lot of things came and went, and I never took a picture of them. And I guess I should have at least snapped one picture of each, but I can't see very well. I think I've told you about it a few dozen times or so. Um, I cannot see through the camera lens. So trying, even with my glasses, trying to get everything in focus, or even being able to tell if it's in focus, is problematic. So I end up... All right, that looks pretty good. I end up having to um, take a bunch of pictures and then go to the computer and check and see what it looks like. Some surplus paint there on the jaw. Make that go away. So while that dries, I'm going to cut some of this burlap. But now it's going to make an interesting texture on the inside of this container here. Well, I guess some of it's going to be hidden behind whatever I add as her dress on the bottom. I found a Mod Podge, so we're going to go old school and just use some Elmer's glue. Now I have to decide if I want the entire thing covered in this or just part of it. Hmm. And also, well, it's going to be black, too. I just want it to have more texture. Let's see. Move this out of here a minute. And I'm going to take some of this, if I can do it without the glitter pouring on everything, which it's doing anyway. Over to the trash can. Over to the trash can we go. Oh, look. I actually threw this away about an hour ago. It's in the trash can. I wonder if that can't be used for this somehow. We'll see. Could be. Okay, glitter bomb. Let's just pack a piece off of here. 
and we'll see what we get. Boy, that glitter just goes everywhere. I have it in gold also, but for some reason I, I thought the silver would go better with this trim that this lid had. Oh boy, I am covered in glitter. Okay, so this is doubled. And this is single. <laughs> glitter. It's got it stuck to itself. Interesting. Was this a tube? I've only used pieces of this. I've never actually tried to open this up. It is a tube. How strange. Okay, let's see. I think I bought this clearanced after Christmas one year for like 50 cents or something out of a bin. I never actually opened it all the way. I just cut pieces. I think the, the one Sarah from Labyrinth that I made was made with some of this in her hair. Yeah, I think single for sure. To loosen this up is going to take some work. Maybe I will cut the burlap just for the corners. Or maybe I'll cut this top. Yeah, that's what I'll do. piece from over here. <laughs> I know it won't stay, but I kind of like this look that it has with all this glitter in here. <laughs> okay, everybody out. Damn it. I'm definitely going to have to vacuum before I start working with clay in here again because this glitter is everywhere. Okay, and this side had the fabric kind of folded over. I think I kind of like that left in there, so I'm not going to cut that off. I am going to cut these loose strings off, though. I don't like them. Come on. There you go. Okay, now we're going to glue this down. And this is going to take quite a bit of glue, so I'm cutting out the middleman here and getting rid of this lid temporarily. I'm just going to throw a bunch of it down. Okay, go back to this paintbrush. Spread this around. And this glue does dry a little shiny, but like I said, I'm going to paint this. Just want to make sure that once I stick it down, it's not going to peel up easily when I add the uh, paint. And I can come back and add more if it seems like it needs it. Okay. Are we recording? Yes. <laughs> you will hear me say that a lot because I have made that assumption before that I'm definitely recording and I didn't check and I wasn't. And there are quite a few of my videos where, sadly, I thought I was recording, but I was not. <laughs> interesting little arch. And the nice thing about Elmer's glue is you don't have to wait for it to dry to go ahead and color it whatever color you want it to be. The paint will blend right with the glue. Okay. I'm just using basic acrylic paint. That one is uh, Liquitex. I'm also going to use folk art paint. Um, Basically, I will use whatever is sitting around. And I typically do not go out and buy a specific brand. I buy what's on sale, and I try it. And if it's good, I'll keep using it forever. 
if it was a good price and I can always get it at a good price. I have even used house paint just for the fact that I liked the color. And if, as long as it doesn't have an odd reaction to whatever I'm going to use it for, then no harm, no foul. Okay, so now I need to pull up a um, skeleton. So what I want to do is I'm going to mark her off. Uh, yeah, that one actually will work. Hold on, let me try again. That one. So I need to draw in. Just going to simplify this and do this breastbone kind of as one piece and then go ahead with the ribs from there and <coughs> skip and i want them to curve i'm probably going to have them yeah i'm a little bit of a gap between them because I'm not going for realism so much as just the effect of them being there. I definitely want a gap between them. See they would not actually be up here, they'd actually stop down there, but I'm doing this for effect. So I'm going to exaggerate it a bit. And they have to cross above her boobs, so, again. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I made those a little on the big side, but it could be worse. So this would be a little bigger. And in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab my white. A small brush. I like the big pile of brushes. No, not too small. Yeah, no, no. And this is just craft paint. I think it's uh, winter white that I'm using. I'm going to go back and change once I set this basic sheet up white. See, the ink is already giving me a little bit of gray, which I kind of like. But I'm going to want a little bit of brown in there, more so than gray. And I am digging the gray. Okay. I just want to get this contrast with the white. And you can see, yes. Now her clothing is going to be sort of faked out. But there will be some kind of trim that comes in over here that's going to cover the fact that she doesn't have an arm over there. And the cool thing about doing these is you do not have to uh, make the whole thing. You just have to glue it on top and give the impression that it's there. If you have in your mind a different way that you want to do this, you go right ahead and do it your way. The end result is entirely up to you. <clears throat> and if you're only using a face, that is fine too. You don't have to do the rib cage or the neck or any of that. But I'm starting with that since this one does have one. And I'm going to add one more rib. It won't have that nice outline around it, but... Oops, I made that pretty wide, didn't I? 
Oh, well. I can touch it back up if you touch me later. <clears throat> okay. So these pink one. Let that dry. And I'll fast forward through this section while I glue this mesh to the background. have <clears throat> some of these little sparkly jewels which I guess are meant for Christmas but I just like the idea of them throwing a little flash of light and color. Let's see, I think I'll use the big ones. I'll stick them on the top here. Lesson learned, bring the glue to the crystal, not the crystal to the glue. Over. She's going to go right about there. I'm going to go right about there, and all of this fringe will hang down up here, and then there's more fringe that dangles off of this at the bottom. So she'll go here, and I will fake her waist, and I will fake the top of a poofy skirt that will sort of terminate in this area. And I don't know if I'll use these or not. But now I know what I'll do with it. I won't throw it away. <laughs> I know what I won't do with it, I suppose I should say. I will not throw it away. Because it will have a purpose. I actually also spotted this stripy yarn in my yarn box over there. And I kind of wish I could interact with you guys as I'm doing this. Because I think I like the idea of putting that along that edge as a trim. But I don't want it to distract from the rest of what's going on here. But I like the the look of it, and I think if I uh, if I glue that on there, it'll just give me a nicer finished edge along here without me having to meticulously paint it again. I definitely want to have room for a few of these skulls, and I'm probably going to have an easy time getting the ones in the bottom, but I'm not sure about the ones to go up here. I might have to cut the back off of them to get them to not stick out quite so much because I don't want it to interfere with the beads. Yeah, so let me see if I can accomplish that with these real quick. One of a million little... Oh yeah, that's they're not that hard. They felt like they were harder than the ones I used previously, but they're really not that thick. Oops, I cut that one crooked. I'm going to try to make a straight, straight cut. So I want them to dip in and sort of disappear. And then the crystals can cover them a bit. Oh yeah, that'll work. So one down, one to go. I'm going to cut this one. I'm just going to eyeball it again. I love cheap plastic stuff. It is easy to force to your will. And you could even cut this shallower if you wanted to. I mean, it doesn't have to be where it sticks out even this much. Matter of fact, I think I lost my line as I went around. Go back again. I wanted to stick closer to that jawbone than I did. 
Here we go. Uh, okay. Come back. Yeah, I think I like that one better. This one still sticks out too far. I'll cut it again. Yes, I do a lot of this. Like I said, I'm never 100% sure how I'm going to do something until I'm doing it. I grab a bunch of materials and I start trying to make a plan and I dry fit it. And if I like how it looks, then I start gluing things together. And if I don't like how it looks, then I grab different stuff and I try again. Yes, very good. I like it stuck in there. I do like these sticking out a bit, so I will leave them uh, in this bottom corner with their skull attached to the back because it's going to give me uh, the ability to use more fabric on her skirt and have it look the way I want it to. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's how that is going to go. Stick that over there. And let's work on you again. I'll do that later. Okay, back to the white paint. All right, I want to do her face. Um, I kind of want to stop it. Yeah, okay. I want it to look like makeup. I don't want it to look like she is a skeleton. I want it to look like she is wearing skeleton makeup. Oh, I should have grabbed a makeup sponge. Do I have one sitting there? Um, nope. All right, bear with me one second. I will trim this out later. This is another tip that you will find useful when you're doing um, a pale makeup on a doll. If you grab your, actually, I know I painted all of this before in the flesh color, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint back this whole area to white and leave some of that showing through. But if you use a makeup sponge and put some paint on the makeup sponge and then dab the face, it helps to get rid of your makeup lines. I hope that's in focus. I really can't tell. Probably not too high on the forehead. By the time I add hair and flowers and such, I'm not going to see that edge. And I kind of wanted it to show. But it can go back and forth. She's starting to look like Margot Robbie a little bit. <laughs> it's that grin. It's that wild grin that she does. Oops, I went down on the jaw. I need to stop at the edge of the face. I hope that's staying in focus. I can't tell. Darn my eyes is all I can say. I can paint back over that with the flush. It'll be fine. And I can warm this white back up with um, some flesh tones in chalk or something else. I'm going to go ahead and give her some nice white teeth. Oops, I left that around too long. It's got a pretty solid line going on up there. All right, we're back with this. This will also pick up your surplus paint if you accidentally laid too thick a layer of paint down. Which is easy to do and easy to fix. That 
looks like makeup. Very good. I kind of want the effect. I don't know if the camera is showing it, but the effect I want is not a solid clown makeup look where you can't see her skin through it at all. That's why I painted it flesh colored first. Because with her already being white, it would have completely done away with um, the look of this being a person altogether. And that's not what I'm shooting for. Okay. Uh, this is called Country Tan. <laughs> Country Tan. So it's just a little bit of a brown. And I'm just going to come on either side of these bones and add a little bit of, I guess, depth is the word, a little dimension. I don't want to go too dark, but I am glad that I had that outline. Just trying to do a fine line now would be hard. And I'm just lining the bones, top and bottom on the ribs, with this color. I'm not using much at all very small amount of the paint. I can fast forward through these sections. I never know who's watching and if you enjoy the process tedious as it may be of going through these things. It is just how much time it takes to do it. And if you have to go back and forth with the paint, with the brown and the white and the brown and the white, just do it. It's not, it's not a big deal. Well, if you've ever watched them do the makeup on, like, YouTube and TikTok and things like that, when they do these types of makeups, they go back and forth quite a bit. So don't feel bad if you have to do it while you're painting. I am going to try, and I hope I don't ruin my pen. Because I love this pen. Yay, this pen's fine. <clears throat> okay, I like that. Now back to her face and I don't like that one. Hold on, I gotta find a different Ooh, that one's scary. <laughs> I don't want that one. I had to go back and use one of the ones I did previously. Okay. So I'm just stenciling in where I think the brow is going to sit. I'm just going to do traditional. And, well, I could start with gray. How about that? I could start with gray, see how I like that. And we're going to do your socket. And you want to stay kind of off the nose as you're looking to go down where your eye socket would be. 
on your face. Again, this is a medium gray <clears throat> food court paint. This is multi-surface paint, so it's a little bit thicker. I can do this side. What I don't want to do is make it look like it's a mask. I definitely want it to look like it is a makeup. hardest part uh, is getting them symmetrical. <laughs> it's a lot easy, especially if your hands shake and then do just a little bit. It's like the harder I try to hold them still, the more they move. All right, now we're going to have a cheekbone going on here. Sorry. So I'm trying to keep you. The rest of this really needs to be done with the black. Switch to a smaller brush. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> I shook those before I started, but shaking them does two things. It makes sure your paint is well mixed, and it also gives you the uh, um, paint in the lid, so you can get at it a little easier. Okay, always start with center line. Oh, it's got such a deep divot. Do you want to try to get centered to the face? And her face is a little crooked. Follow the lip. First tooth. Follow the lip. Second tooth. And I'm going to come in the mouth here above where the teeth will go, paint that lip, the underside of her lip, all the way across black. Because her mouth is open, I have to do this, but what you need to do is just paint her um, little line that separates the lips, ordinarily. All you have to do is paint the line that separates the lips black, and then paint the Come on. I guess I'm painting the teeth again. And then paint the teeth lines in. You can water this paint down and it flows a little easier. So let's do that. I'm going to put a little bit of paint over here with a little bit of water in it just to get it to flow better. I don't want ink thin. I don't know if you can see. I don't want ink thin, but I want it pretty thin. Wipe off the surplus so it doesn't bleed. And I'm going to keep going with the teeth. Now, it doesn't have to be realistic as far as the scale of like the teeth. But this line goes all the way over to that edge. On that side. Oh, turn it around. Let me get the line straight. It's going to go from here all the way over to the cheek. And the 
teeth continue as well. Okay? Trying to keep you in frame. Hold on. Can you see? Okay. I think you can see. And then you want to keep looking back at the other side because you, you want it to be sort of the same on both sides. If you feel like getting a picture out and looking at how big the teeth are in relation to each other, you are welcome to. But I've never had anybody pull a piece off the wall and say, those teeth are too close together. <laughs> They're too far apart. That's not right. Never say never. I should never say never because you never know. It could happen someday, but it's never happened so far. Wait, it's hard to see. Where are my other glasses? Uh, oh, that's not good. I don't see them. Well, let's try adding these and see how that goes. I see without getting in front of the camera. I think so. Because so much of this lip shows, because her mouth is open, I'm getting a little more coverage to get my line straight. And I'll come back in. Let me see. Hmm. It's hard to tell what you're seeing. Okay, the bottom teeth are smaller. To dry it. It's too much water. It doesn't look terrible. Okay. All right. That's just the corner. I think, I think of it like ink when I add the water to the paint. You have to now treat it like it's ink and not paint because it will bleed. If it sees a corner, it will pour itself into it like an octopus. All right. The bottom teeth also start in the middle. Come here. A little further out. And can you see? I think so. All right, let's stop looking at our thing. Oh, you can see just fine. Okay. Now I just have to see myself. All right, and these are smaller. I have the equivalent of eight times magnification on my face right now. <laughs> and I have to be extremely close to it. So if you're seeing my glasses, it's because I have to lean in for this to work. All right, now you get back here, go wider. But your bottom teeth are mostly small teeth across the whole front. Until you get back where the molars are, and then they get bigger. Okay, it was funny. I, I made a Day of the Dead piece a long time ago, and one of the other doll artists who apparently did not know what Day of the Dead was called her Zipper Face. <laughs> I thought it was funny. But, anywho. Okay, I'm going to take those back off for a minute. All right, and I grabbed, I thought I grabbed the one called, no, nope, I didn't. Okay, that's fine. I have to touch this light up anyway.
I don't need a big blob of paint right in the middle of her teeth there. Okay, that's pretty good. I do have a big blob of paint right in the middle of her eye area, though. That's weird. Okay, now back to her makeup. Oh, you know what else? I have to fix that gloop on her jawline. I forgot about it for a minute. She has a little... Oh, you know what else? Yep, needs more. <laughs> a whole lot of going back and forth. She needs a little more jaw. Oops, too much paint on this side. No square yet? Nope. A little bit of gray in here. Wasn't expecting. I'm just going to throw it on the side here. On that side and on this side. Alright, I need some of that bone color. Grab that moment. There we go. Come off that extra. Oh no! I pulled it off. To glue that later. me how good it's staying in focus because it does not normally do me that favor. A little brown in here. And brown over here. Probably should water this down a little more. Acrylic likes to dry so fast. Too dark. I don't like how dark it is, so I'm going to lighten it back up. Blot it out a little bit. Try to get rid of that harsh line that I just gave myself. And I should have gathered references before I started, but I didn't. Sorry. It is alright. I'm going to go on on bone right here. And Now, above the teeth, you will typically have some darker bone, so you're going to want to, and you can do a half round shape above what each tooth would be, or you can just kind of, this is even almost a little too dark here, let's mix some of that together. Yeah, you just want an indication that those teeth stop and the bone starts just up here. If you want to spend the time and really go at this, you are welcome to. I'm just trying to indicate that the bone stops here. But that is teeth we are looking at against the lips. <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta keep looking at the camera. Sometimes I forget to do it. again. <clears throat> okay, now back to the actual makeup. Around here.
I'm going to thicken this line up a little bit because I think my color is going to come land in this area. And I'm going to make this a little more round. At least the part of the, the eye here that's exposed that's not in this black border. See how it looks a little more round in the midst of that. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to stay where I can see where you can also see. This grinning, grinning face is kind of freaking my brain out. And I don't think I've ever used one before. That was grinning like a Cheshire cat. But different doesn't mean wrong. <laughs> My art is nothing if not eclectic. So if it's different, it's different. Um, okay. Oh, the gray. I needed more gray. <clears throat> right there. I got a little carried away. Right here. It didn't really get good coverage. Okay. Get that to black liner. This bit is tedious because you gotta make sure you don't touch the eyeball. I don't know if you can make out the trembling. I swear to God, the harder I try to hold my hand still, the more it shakes. to have that glare interfere with the camera's ability to focus. It's trying to do the waterline and get it right down close to the eye. Ordinarily I'd go in with a little bit of red or something there, but <clears throat> under the circumstances I'm just going to let it be this eyeliner color. God, that's the light. Come on. I think a little, not too much, but a little. Okay, there's too much paint on the end of that brush. Let's try again. That's better. Very hard balancing, needing to see what I am doing with trying to stay in frame for the camera. Okay, I think I don't like this outer corner here being gray. So I'm going to paint that black. Which means I have to come back on that eye and put more gray. Okay, I'm getting there. Uh, the nose. Let's do the nose while we're thinking about it. 
Okay, you do not have to paint your entire nose. Her nose is flared. So I think I'm going to back off on doing the whole nose because I like the look of the smaller one. So you want to start by painting down one side and the other. Okay, and then join them in the middle. It's like a little um, teardrop, sort of, at the bottom. And it's up to you how much of the nose you want to include in it. You can do the entire nose. going to try and get up in the nostril a little bit just so I don't have that glaring whiteness coming back at me. Okay, and I might take this a little pointier, a little higher. Yeah. Okay, I like that. And you can add details on the rest of the face in color, or you can do it in black and then add color on top. There's a whole lot of things you can do. I'm going to put a little... Hold on, what's the shape of that crystal? Okay, the one that dangles. That's sort of a... Sort of an almond shape. I'm noticing this line doesn't match. Okay, need that gray. See, this is one reason why I use uh, colors that I have on shelf rather than trying to mix colors. Because if you have a custom mixed color and you have to go back and touch it up and you don't get it exactly right. <laughs> it's a no bueno. So you might as well do yourself a favor and not do all that extra mixy mixy that's just going to cost you later time trying to figure out how to mix that magical color that you picked the first time. Okay. Now, I'll, still, I'll put the lid back on the black one. I still need that. Okay, now I have to put... Maybe I should draw it with the pen first. Hmm. I think I'm going to throw a crack. Just a little crack there. And... Where else might I want to put one? Maybe here? Oh, probably. Turn around. It helps to draw the crack. Pull it. Instead of trying to push it. Two might be enough, but... Well, that'll be it for the crack. Okay. Little brown. Just adding a little brown near the crack because it would not be a smooth, solid line like that. Good. I'm definitely going with red. So let's get my red. And this one is superior coverage lipstick red. 
and so guard. Oops, it's slumped. <laughs> okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dots. My hair in the camera? No. Good. Paint is very thick. Been on the shelf for a while, I guess. Try to keep the dots uniform in size, but if they're not, it is not the end of the world. If the black starts to seep through, just go back and make a second dot on top of the first dot. Your first trip around, you're just trying to place them. Kind of bringing that little teardrop shape into the ones above her where her eyebrow would be just so it stands out a little bit more because they are kind of small the dots that I made and usually these makeups when they add the color they want the color to stand out but I don't want it to overpower it either in case red is not the only color I use I can always come back in with a dot of another color right next to these and make it a little more elaborate. Okay, now again, for this area right here by the nose, what you want to try to do is match the dots on this side to the dots on that side the best that you can, spacing and size-wise. And you only have to worry about where they are right on the nose, because the rest of them won't even show if they're not lined up with each other right along the bridge of the nose just you know try to get them height wise lined up with the ones on the other side I'm just kind of marking where the ones are on this side to the ones on that side okay and now I can make them a little more prominent by bringing them up into the white oil. Yep, that's what I need to do on this side too. I think maybe that's why they're not standing out because there's not that big contrast between the red and the white. Yeah, that looks cool. It's not a perfect circle anymore, but it looks cool. It's kind of teardroppy shape. I decided instead of finishing the dots that I would move on to painting the eyes uh, so I don't end up messing up the dots trying to paint the eyes. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to paint the eyes a while. Uh, typically you don't want the eyes to be stark white, but I'm going to go ahead and leave these mostly white and I might add a little bit of like either a bluish or a yellowish tint going down the side. Let's see. I might come with a little tiny bit of blue. Although yellow would be kind of creepy. <laughs> yellow is always creepy with people's eyes, but I don't think it's really super necessary. All right, you want to definitely want to keep it thin. So I'm going to keep a little bit of water here. <laughs> might as well have a drink while I'm at it. All right. I'm going to use the cap so I can make sure I have thinned it. And it's going to give me very little paint. Okay. I'm just going to come in the corner here and just add a little bit of blue. Just barely any color. Oops. Let's see, I got some on the eyeliner part. I don't want it there. Okay, I'll do the other side real quick before the 
paint dries. Just a little bit of that blue onto the eye. Just so it's not stark white. And it adds a little bit of uh, roundness. Okay, now I want to take just the tiniest little bits of red and pink. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use paint for that. Instead, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use chalk. Brushes. And my big bucket of chalk. As you can see, these are the ones I use all the time. And if you watched any of my other videos where I demonstrate chalk, you'll see that I kind of mutilate the brushes. I will take a brush that started its life as one of these little detail brushes, and I chop off almost every bit of the bristle. I take it down to just this thick little cluster. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, come on camera, find them. I put my finger in front of them, see if that helps it. Try, there we go. And I cut them off and I blunted them so that they are stiff but um, very short. And that way it allows me, because they're really soft bristles, because that is a really, really soft bristle on that paintbrush. But it allows me to pick up the color that I want. And I'm looking for a shade to go on the, um, the tear duct. So I'm just going to come in the corner here and give that a little twist. You see the tear duct color just pops right out. And this, doing this gives me a lot of control over where that color is going. I'm using this one, which I don't know the actual name of it, but it's kind of a terracotta color. And then this, which is a really pinky pink. And somewhere between the two, the color softens up enough so it's not really either color. And I just put it in the corner and I use the metal itself kind of like a stop color doesn't come out past there and it lets me rub it right into that corner. You just blow that extra away and now you have your tear duct. Okay and you can throw a little color in the cheek if you want to. Um, usually you don't with Day of the Dead but I'm going to go with just a really pale pink just over here on the cheek. And I'm just going to kind of tap it on a little really really pale pink. I forgot to make sure there was no other color on this already before I started. Which I normally do and that's usually the first thing I do when I touch one of these because I use them for all different kinds of colors. Okay that's pretty good. Now I'm going to use some of this to blush the body. I'm going to exaggerate it a bit. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, but it's hard. I'm going to come up under the chin here. I'm using the darker color. Probably darker than I need to, but I really want the contrast. Now, I don't know how much of this is going to end up... Um, covered in clothing. Probably a fair bit, but I'm still going to try to throw a little bit of color contrast going on in there. You can see it in this light. I try to use natural sunlight. I have this great big window over here that um, lets in a lot of natural light, but it seems to also create some really wild shadows. You can see them. Okay. I like that. I have to finish the red dots, obviously. Um, I think that's pretty good. I'll set that aside for now. I'll come back to it if I decide it needs more. And go ahead and do the eyes. Now I picked this shade of blue. And I picked... Where's the other one? Hold on. I picked a really dark blue. There it is. It's navy. Navy blue. Navy... Uh, English navy. And then this one is uh, Calypso blue. It's just really, really pretty blue. And what I'm going to do is give her uh, maybe a little sideways glare. 
plants where she's she's going to be looking off in that direction and up for no particular reason other than it looks cool <laughs> when you do that. Okay, now I don't want a big brush like that. I want a small brush. I try really hard not to mix up my brushes. I have brushes that do certain things and I try not to mess them up doing other things like, you know, you don't want to use your oil brushes for acrylic and you don't want to use your watercolor brushes for anything other than watercolor. That sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to put my other pair of glasses on over top of these so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to try to, hopefully that stays in focus. It, it decides to do what it wants to sometimes. Instead of using a dark color to ring the eye, sometimes I'll use black just because it's really striking. I'm going to use just this dark blue and see what I think of it. And I take my time when I hand paint the eyes. Okay, no, that doesn't look... No, she looks crazy. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. I see what the problem is. Let me bring this over here. I did not paint enough of the upper eyelid. Oops, sorry. I didn't paint enough of that upper eyelid, so... It's, um... Her eyes are huge. Getting them to track in the same direction is, well, at least it can be quite tricky. And you have to get them the same size and the same roundness. Which I shake a little bit, so that always makes it a little bit harder. Oops. Yeah, that's... Round is it? Okay. okay. And now I'm going to go back. Oh, I'm still not round on this side. Hold on. You will pick these up and you will set them down and you'll pick them up and you'll set them down again and again and again because you're going to keep seeing the difference from one eye to the other. It's just going to happen no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try. Every time you look back at it again, it's going to look like it isn't the same size. <laughs> it seems to be an inevitability, at least to my eye, which is enough to drive you crazy. Well, to drive me crazy. Okay, now I'm going to touch that, which I probably should be using a, a mat. This is a, a slightly shiny. Can you see? Is that a little more light? Okay, I'm just going to come here and I'm make sure I only have paint on one side of the brush. Because I did not paint enough. Also, oh, it's too dry. Make that a palette. Come on. Get a little in there. There we go. Try it again. Put away on one side. There we go. That's working. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Let's fix the other side too. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing, but there is white paint on the underside edge of this waterline because I didn't get quite as tight there. Oh god, my hands are really shaking. It's really slight. I don't know if you can see it. I can feel it and I can see that my hand is shaking. See, that's drying up already. Okay. Okay, yeah, I like that. That looks like fun. Okay, um, did I get gold? I don't think I got gold paint. 
Um, okay, I'll take care of that in a minute. I'm going to ring the center here with this blue. I'm going to go close to the edge of that line, but not right up to it. I'm going to follow the line I already made and count on it to be ground at this point. Come on, hand, quit shaking. Go to the line. Right to the edge, but not over it. Okay, now this one. And you don't want to go and touch the underside of that waterline, or you'll do that again. Which, if you have to, you have to, but. And you can see the shake in there. I swear, my anxiety, the more I think about it, I try to stop myself from shaking, the harder it, it shakes. And it seems to be very little I can do about that. Oh yeah, there. It's going to be glowing, gleaming blue. Okay. And now, for a little bit of gold, if it will let me. I like to use a little bit of gold close to the... Um, the pupil because it catches the light and it gives you just this little glint and I'm using very little so it doesn't overpower the blue and then we can put little teeny tiny specks over here almost so little paint on your brush that it's almost a dry brush just little specks out on the edge. Give some dimension to what is a really flat paint job right now. But I want it flat on purpose so that it, um, it doesn't overpower the blue. Because I want the eyes to look blue, not gold. Does that make sense? Okay, too much paint. Yep. Glad I tested it. I'm trying to get this right on that dark blue line. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Well, you can kind of see it. You can see it better in person. And once I put the, um, the UV gel, you will see it even better still. Okay. Now I do need, because i got a little bit of that blue on the water line, I do need to go touch that again. And this is normal for me on account of the way my hands shake to have to go back and forth a lot. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now I'm going to try and pick up a good size dollop of paint. Okay, and I'm going to try to center it on the eye not to the opening that I have, but center it to the eye. Try to touch it around and pull away. And now they, it has a pupil. Okay. Wipe that paint off in case it started to dry. Come back. Pick up again. I'm kind of scooping, like dipping into the paint, which this is really thick paint. So I'm dipping in and I'm picking up that little little dollop. Tricky part now is making a match. Come back again. Remember, you want them looking in the same direction, so you want to come at it the same way. Ta-da! Pretty good. Pretty good for shaky hands. Okay, now there is a little teeny bit of surplus paint that just applied itself right here. I want gone because it's going to interfere with putting lashes. 
and I'm ready to do that. I just need to flatten it out. There we go. I don't know if you could even see that, but I could. Well, I can because I'm wearing two pair of glasses, <laughs> which has me seeing like it's a microscope almost. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the red paint. And I jumped around from color to color so that I can, and thing to thing, so that I can let this dry while I work on that, and then I can let that dry while I work on this. And I find that that keeps me flowing pretty well. I don't have to keep putting things completely away to um, sit and dry. I can just keep going on something. And I can fast forward through this part, I guess. I'm getting even remotely close to what's on the other side. Not sure, but I'm going to try. And keep where you can see. This part's pretty self-explanatory. You just want the dots to be close. And if you use the same tool, you can usually achieve that. There's this art form, I can't think off the top of my head what it's called, but basically the whole thing is about making dots, patterns out of dots. And I tried it and I would need a lot of practice and a way to make my hand not tremble. I was trying to get the brush down in the exact spot you want it every time and give you the exact same size dot every time apparently is not going to be something that I'm going to be good at despite wanting to be I just don't seem to have that ability okay so that's pretty good as far as them being the same on both sides now to finish up and figure out what the rest of her face is going to look like I have a few new I have my, my regular gold paint pen and I might use it, or I might just use a Sharpie. We'll see. I think I might do the inverted spider web, which is kind of a, a favorite design. Let's see. Which one do I want to do? Yeah, I think this one. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to use a Sharpie. I'm going to use... Oh, shoot. Pencil? Do I still have a pencil of lead in it? Yes. I'm going to use pencil. I'm going to go very lightly. I'm going to go from this little thing here. Okay. Um, go <clears throat> straight up. <laughs> yeah, my hands are quite shaky. Okay. Now, once you have those lines in. Your next thing you want to do is take your darker one, which you may think it's cheating to use a Sharpie, and it may very well be, but it does a good job, and it doesn't wipe off. It is a permanent ink, so um, I'm just going to blacken those lines in. Let's see. I'm stopping right at the edge. Oops. Undershot. Undershot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to literally keep this floating here in midair. Let me see if I can bring it down so that I can rest my hand. Maybe that'll help my hand not shake so darn much. How's that? That's better. Now I can rest my hand. Maybe it'll stop trembling. Okay, yeah, I like that. Okay, so now... Your web is going to droop, um, so you're going to start, I wonder, with my gel pen. Let me try something real quick, because that will give me a finer line. I mean, it worked over here. I don't see why not. I just have to make sure I don't smudge it before it dries. Okay, I'm going to start at the top on the outside and come down, because I don't want to smudge it. So you're going to start and swing your, like a little cup, because your spider webbing is going to droop. And try not to go downhill, which I am doing. Okay. 
I'm going to do this one all the way to the bottom just to set the lines. Okay. And this is here. Actually, I might just do it this way just to make sure I'm not going to run out of room. There is the desire to do this quickly, but the problem with quick is you usually don't quite get it the way you want it. So take your time. There's nothing wrong with doing it slow. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I happen to have a, an absolute ton of Austrian crystals that I, um, I use for everything because they were left over from my, uh, my store. And why not? I have them. Might as well use them. I'm going to stick one of these. The cool thing about these is they're, they come with an adhesive already on them. Because it's a, it's a medical adhesive. These were meant to be worn as tattoos. Let's see. And they're actually Swarovski crystals. So I will put that there like that. And that adhesive that's already on it will hold it in place. And then I'll paint some of the, uh, let's see, the UV resin. Anyway, I'll use the UV resin um, and paint it around just the base of it and then set it so it's prominent. But it gives this neat little sparkle to anything I want it to. I don't have a ton of red ones. So I usually use some of these. And you can go anywhere you want with them. You can add some sparkle to the, the webbing. You see they just have a little bit of this little focus. Nope, it won't focus. There, you can see it. Just a little bit of adhesive on it. And I'm going to stick these up here. Do the iridescent every other one and then a clear one. And they will just barely show beneath her hair. Or they might not show at all. But I like how they look, so. Okay, and a couple of these. And I will look and see if I can find something. I mean, you can find these that are uh, little glue-on crystals. I'll see if I can spot them somewhere online and put them in the feed. Um, I have so many, I could probably even sell some. If you're interested, let me know. Kind of makes that look like a crown. I approve. <laughs> I might even stick some in her hair. Just a little more bling. They just are so pretty. And I can stick them like in the corners of the eye just to add that little extra sparkle if I want it to. I think that's maybe all I'm going to do with the face, but probably not. I, I was thinking maybe I'd see how this pen, how fine it is. If it's a real fine pen, I might add some gold on the face there. I haven't used this one yet. It's brand new, so I'm hoping it's not going to explode. When I... takes them a minute. The gold slowly starts to ooze down to the end of the tip. You don't want to go overboard or it ends up gushing. You have to push it a few times and be patient and wait. See if enough came out yet. I guess I should put that there in case it's loose. It's very stinky this stuff. 
starting to come out. Okay, I'm seeing gold. It has a nice shininess to it. See it? All right. I want to go overboard. Let's see. Maybe. How fine a line will it let me do? That's pretty fine. bit of gold there just for some extra flash maybe hmm let me match what's on that side hmm. be careful a little too much coming out a little gold a little gold Drop of gold in that corner. Instead of a crystal. like that. That's pretty good. Now, do I want any little scroll work anywhere? Maybe a little a dot, a curl, a dot, and a curl. And reverse it. Over here. Dot, and a curl, a dot, and a curl. No, I didn't get them even at all. Ugh, it's so hard upside down. <laughs> I'm going to try this again. Uh, I'm going to turn it upside down this time. And... Let's see, I started here. Okay. This is a much smaller face than I usually do this with. All right. Come on. Oh, try not to have it in my hair. I probably should pin my bangs back. That would help. Do I dare add anything else to this makeup? Uh, okay. See, I'm normally working on a bigger face. As a matter of fact, I can show you the picture. Uh, and this is something else that you can do these with. Um, I'm sure you have all seen these at yard sales and flea markets and these are the little masks that I was talking about and this is one that I made probably oops probably 10 years ago maybe eight years ago and the eyes are on this were just glass beads I actually cut um, with my Dremel to make the eye holes bigger because you can see a lot of times they're just itsy bitsy um, and I painted it, and it's got the crystals and the dots and all that kind of stuff on it. Um, I think this one has a flower on its chin. And then this was a an, uh, just a metal. You can see it was just yellow and black. And 
I painted it to look like a monarch butterfly because that is our state butterfly. And I gave the little flower stems to be its little antennas and an assortment of flowers. This one's been hanging on the wall in my uh, studio for a while. I almost forgot it was up there to show you. And you would use this. And as long as it does not have textured paint, um, you can just spray paint it white, get it to your solid color, and then work from there. Or you can paint it whatever color you want. And then it can be mounted on anything like we talked about before. These are preferable for a flat application like this. Put holes in your backing, your, your paper backing, and actually mount this with wire to that paper backing so that it stays in there. And it doesn't have to be day of the dead. You can just paint it up like a human face and maybe do a fairy theme or uh, anything you want. Anything you want, really. You can do witches for Halloween, however you want to do it. I'm doing day of the dead. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might um, go back to my chalk here and find a color that I like. I'm going to use this brush, I think, and bring a little of this in here, just because I don't like how bright that spot right there is, but I don't want to put paint over top of that gold. There we go. And this is like almost black chalk. And you can see that even on the, the, um, uh, Come on, brain. Even on the painted surface, it still does a nice job. And where I put the, trying to get the color to show the bone, I didn't have to use paint. I could have used this just to show this is bone and this is teeth. You can also, once you get that established, you can do this, which this is fun too. You can take your paintbrushes get yourself a little bit of UV gel, which, oh, I don't want to put that in the light, do I? I usually put on a little piece of tape. Oh, bear with me a second. I got to protect it from the sunlight. Close that curtain up a little bit. A little bit of UV gel up here. We're going to put it on the teeth, not her teeth but the teeth on the face. Oopsie, I got a piece of hair in there. Oh. Yep, I just put it where I don't want it. Okay, change my mind. I don't like how that looks. Uh.
whatever you use for the UV, you're going to ruin, no matter what. So don't use a good brush. All right, I'm just going to risk it. I'm just going to paint over the whole... God, I'm shaking. Okay. Did I get some on the lip? If you did, you want to get it off now because once it sets, it is immobile. All right, I'm going to go cure this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to do the eyes. And then I'm going to throw this into the uh, UV oven for a bit. I don't try to get the whole dome in one shot because if you put too thick and it shifts, it'll ruin the whole face. You're going to have to strip it. And that is no good. So I put a thin coat on and cure it and then I come back and add another and another and another until it's the way I want it. As far as I know, this light does not shed UV, but I'm going to cover it just in case. Coat two. I'm just using my little UV lamp. It's got, where are you? Purple. Little purple lights. Oh, sugar. My glasses are falling off. Hold on. Just to set it so it won't move around too much. Because I see it was trying to creep on me. And I need to do something about that. I have to make sure that <clears throat> what I add stays on this side and doesn't go running off on that side. I'm only doing this part of the eye and trying not to go on to the white part just yet so that I establish the dome. <clears throat> but you want to be careful also that you don't get this purple light on your little pile of UV gel. I have a little nail oven that I use that uh, beauticians use for um, acrylic nails, I guess. Oh, now's when the gold, the little flecks of gold start to show. It takes about... I don't know, I guess two minutes in the oven to like really, really cure the UV resin if you don't want it to be sticky. Um, you can even put it in for even longer. I'm just trying right at the moment to get a believable dome on her eyes. I keep putting the wrong glasses on. Hold on. I need these. Okay, so let's 
a little spot where I can see through both at the same time. And it really magnifies everything, makes it easy for me to see what I'm doing. Oh, shoot, I got that on my finger. There you go. All right, now this time I'm going to go from the tear duct over to and do the whole eye. Can you see? Oh, I got you way up there. Hold on. Let's try again. Good, we have two eyes. Go in the corner here. And you want to be neat with this. You don't want to get it all over the face. You just want it on the eye. And you can see where that pink in the corner is popping with that on there. And the blue that we added earlier is helping make the eyeball look a little more translucent and not stark white which is not what we want. Okay. Might give one more thin layer on here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Let's set that. I'm going to set that with the thing again. And be careful. This will set that UV gel so quickly you'll be amazed. Make sure you don't just, just running it across the surface of your little puddle of UV gel will turn the a skin on the top into a solid. <laughs> and that is not good for the stuff underneath. Okay. Sorry. Trying to keep it away from that puddle so we don't ruin it because I can get that back in the jar and it won't go to waste. All right, I think that's all of it that I need so I can just pick this up on this little piece of tape, invert it, and wipe it off. It goes right back into the jar. Very little waste. Now because this stuff has quite a strong odor, I do um, clean it off and uh, cure that. I cure that in the nail oven along with the piece. Now if you got, I got this on my other brush. If you get your rubbing alcohol real quick and just keep wetting it with the rubbing alcohol and wiping on a paper towel again and again and again. It also pulls any old paint that was in there. This is taking the red that's deep down in those bristles. And it's also getting rid of that UV gel from the brush. Keeps the bristles for the one I use for the UV gel even. Keeps them soft. Okay. Now let me double check here. Everything looks good. All right, back in the oven she goes. Okay, I'm going to try not to bump these things here. Um, the part of making a face like this, because it's so little, that is that I find to be the most tedious, is actually... Um, oh, hold on. I put the tape, I put the camera mount on top of the... <laughs> <laughs> on top of the sticky, um, I mean the UV resin. Wow, couldn't think of the word. Okay, um, it, the part that I find the most tedious about working on a, a doll this size is um, putting the eyelashes on. It's it is more complicated than it sounds because unlike a human, you can't just stick them. You can see I have the one on already. Uh, you have to finagle it because they don't come already curved and designed to stick to such a shallow lid as is on this. So I, I did a video once before, and I'm going to put these on with the same method. Um, but what I'm going to do is apply some UV gel up on one corner, only one corner of the lash line. And I'm going to try to put a fair bit, but not so much that it wants to weep onto the eye there. And I already pre-trimmed a um, 
a piece of lash here. I'm hoping it's going to cooperate. Nope. Okay. I'll bring it in here. Hopefully the light and the focus is cooperating. Actually, you can also dip the end of the lash into... Oh, hold on. I have little hairs stuck to this that are going to get in the way of it sticking down. I think I may have reversed these, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I did. They're not the same length. That's okay. Um, I have a solution for that, too. I'm just going to cut it in half. Wait, no, that's right. That one just needs to be trimmed. No, it should be shorter on the outside. Or shorter on the inside, I mean. I'm going to trim this where the short lashes are. Okay, I'm going to stick that one on first. So I'm just dipping it in. You see? I'm ready to frame. I'm just dipping it lightly into the gel and then tapping a little bit back off. And I'm going to stick this right into that liquid that I just put in and try to get it to stand up. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little UV light off camera because I don't want to set the rest of it. And I'm just going to set that lash. If you have one of these little UV flashlights and it's not setting the lens, or setting the UV gel rather, um, it needs fresh batteries. Just because it's lighting up blue doesn't mean that, that it's actually working. You'll go touch this later and you'll see that it is not, um, it's not set up. And this stuff's so sensitive to UV that you're going to see that that will start to crust over. What time? I prefer to do this in one piece as opposed to trying to do it separate like this because the pieces hold on to each other and you get a cleaner line. I'm counting on my eyeballs. All right, I'm pretty happy with how that one's in there, so I'm going right into the nail oven with it which will set that permanently. Now you'll see I have a few stray hairs here that I clipped off that um, if I need to fill in, I can fill in with a single hair here and there. I like picking up, these were, these have been on the floor. <laughs> I don't know what, how I dropped them, when I dropped them, but they got pretty dirty. But these are lashes made for people. And um, if you look at them closely, you'll see that they're actually tapered to a very fine point the way our actual hair is on the end. So I'll like snip off just the, just the little tip of it. Not that much for really small dolls because it, it looks more natural. It doesn't look like a big thick clump of uh, hair just stuck to it. But you can also use, um, like if you find natural fur, like mink or um, rabbit, things like that, even uh, you know, uh, yeah, my brain is struggling today for some reason. Like, this is Tibetan fur, Tibetan sheep fur, I think. And you can see how fine, you, know, you can see how fine the fur is. And it makes really nice, soft, natural looking lashes on really small dolls. I'll use this on my, my tiny heads, the ones that are, let me grab one, like this size. Oops, in frame. There we go. Like this size. I'll use that for, and what I'll do is I'll lay down a line of glue, this UV gel, a real straight pin line, and then I'll lay the lashes into it just on a flat surface like this. And then once I cure it, I can peel it up, trim off any excess glue that's there, and I have a piece that's like this, but the backing is completely clear. 
like this one has a really thick backing that one there has a really thin backing that's going to look more like what you get from the uv see the difference this one it's really really almost see-through and that's how the the uv gel track that i make by hand ends up working okay i don't want to have it set doesn't take very long okay those are our lashes it looks pretty good to me. A little bit long and dramatic, but isn't that what you usually put on with your Halloween makeup? You can knock a butterfly over with those lashes. <laughs> but they're cute. I like them. Okay, so back to it. I um, finished the trim and uh, I took the hair back off over because it was just for show. Um, next step, I have to mock up her body and at first I was thinking that I was going to use here's a piece of flat uh, foam board but I actually have a bunch of this aluminum foil that I had pulled off for another project that I ended up not using so it's all crumpled up and it's going to waste so I'm going to reuse it to make the uh, lower part of the torso and the frame that the dress will go on so I'm going to want to condense it into a shape that will mimic her body. Stretch on down here, the hair. There we go. And I don't want anything glued yet. I've had this laying here for a while. And I keep forgetting it's there. And so I'm going to go over here. And this is going to be so this is going to be the lower part where the fabric is going to be. Okay, and I've got this part around here. And try to bring that right up to her torso. I'm going to make sure we give her a small waist. And then, so your waist would be through, your ribcage comes to about here, and then your waist. So I need to compress this in a little bit. I'm not going to put clay on this. I'm just making a frame to support what will look like the dress. And I might put like a little corset piece that's going to bridge from here to there. Let's say, I'm going to make it too narrow. All right, I've got some more clay, or clay, <laughs> more foil. I also don't want this to stick up too far past the edge of this. I want to make sure that it's kind of solid. So I'm just going to try to keep adding on top here. And the original crinkles will grab one to the other crinkles, and for the most part, this will hold on to itself. All right, back up. Have a look. That's pretty close. Now I had this piece here and then this will come, I'm going to cut it off and it'll come and be over the top here and it can wrap underneath sort of like that but you have to have the thing wrap it around. Okay let me separate these two from each other. This I'm definitely seeing I do not want them connected. Okay, so I want this, and I'm just going to start um, on the back. Oh, you know what? Just to stabilize this and make sure it stays together for me, I'm going to wrap it in some masking tape so it won't come apart since I have multiple layers of foil here. Relief. Okay, so I'm going to bring this here. Oh, good. I already have the angle on that side. I'm probably going to have to cut it on that side. But I want it to follow this. So I'm going to start with this right here. Come on, hot ribbon. Put a little hot glue right along there. And stick this to it real quick. Make sure I don't have too much fabric underneath to interfere. Now you can use 
if you don't want to burn your fingers constantly, which happens, um, you can use uh, fabric tack or something like that. Um, although, given yeah, I better put my waist too. Hold on. Given that this is oh no, so much for that idea. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Um, <clears throat> given that this is foil, the fabric tack. Yeah, the fabric tack might not stick to it, but you could try instead of risking burning yourself with hot glue. They have those little um, silicone finger things, and I actually bought myself some, but I have no idea <laughs> where I put them. They're in here somewhere. Maybe someday I will figure out where I put them, and I won't need to burn myself like I'm about to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line of glue right along there. You stay on, and I'm going to bring this over kind of loosely, and lay it in there so it has a little bit of ability to pleat. And then I'll bring it back over myself. Like that. I'll just give it a little pin right there. Again, right there. All right, and underneath. And loosely. <clears throat> Remember, this is the underneath part. There's going to be a, uh, another layer of fabric on top, so that the red looks more interesting. Okay, make sure you're like, I don't know about that much more pleated, so I'm going to pleat in the opposite direction this time. So I'm going to change that a little bit. There we go. And we'll tuck. Try to keep in a sort of straight line across here. I'm going to take a little bit of this um, sheer fabric. I'm going to make a little ruffle edge, and I'm going to tuck it up under here, so it looks like she has a black pinhook on underneath. And this is why I'm not gluing this down yet, because I'm going to glue that right to here once I get it gathered. But first I'm going to get this one. And I'll just a bit of hole there. And then the last is going to go on the edge, and then on the back. And you can really condense this with a big pile of foil if you want. Or, like I said, you can use um, thumb board and cut the figure. I just was thinking if it had a little bit of body to it, it would look like a body. Okay, so we got that. And then this, I don't think I want it the whole length. I think I want it up a little bit. So there's a, a, a gap there. And it's probably going to lay flat as opposed to the little bit of a ruffle effect that we have with this. All right, and it's going to stop before the waist, so, well, maybe, maybe not. Oh, that actually doesn't look terrible right there. If, if I keep these together, that kind of raw edge under the bust line looks kind of cool. What do you think? <laughs> that was an accident right there. So I just need something to cinch the waist, and I have this leather here that I thought maybe a piece of that might, oh it was this end I thought would be wide enough, make a little um, like a bustier type waist piece. It's probably the wrong color. Maybe black leather would be better. Uh, or uh, this is one of the many drawers of trims that I have. I have it sorted by, uh, by color because I have way too many different kinds of this stuff material wise so I decided I was going to go by color instead and I have all manner of trims let's see oh, that around the... no nope 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 but this is pretty I'm gonna this show let's see okay well then let's not get glue on everything huh that's a thought keeps pushing herself up that way. And yeah, not wide enough. Keep trying. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, okay. I have... I very rarely go buy a new anything because I, I always hang on to interesting trims. Like, if something I had had a really pretty lace and I'm not going to keep the garment anymore. I trim the lace off and I save it. Because um, you never know when it's going to turn out to be oops, the perfect thing. Huh. Actually, that's so pretty. No. The red is just boring on its own. Although I do have... Maybe this is just too thick. I do have other options for an overlay. I have saved so much stuff. Silver. Well, her dress has silver, so let's see. How about you? Come in here like this. Right there. 
I just dry fit everything until I find what I like. Ooh, look at that. Huh. Right between the boobs and on either side. Ooh, I like that. How do they look together? Huh. Okay, I like this and I like it upside down. Okay. What else do I have? I don't like this. Here's a piece of black leather. Oh, why are you pinned? Kind of a corseted effect. Hmm. Yeah, this stuff, which would just put a little fringe down the skirt. Hmm. I also have a ton of jewelry that um, I'm going to pick some things from that drawer, which I will go get in a little while. Oh, these beads. How about you? Let's see. Beads dangling on the front? No. Makes her look like a can can girl. Not what I want. Old headband I thought was interesting. Make the belt look cool. That's an option. Oh, black and white. No. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Decisions I probably could have made off camera, but I just want to show that you don't have to already have a plan. You can totally fly by the seat of your pants. Wow, that is pretty, but it's too big for this. Okay, what are you? Well, that's interesting. All right, drawer. Some more of the other stuff. No, it's smaller scale. Let's see. Glittery, sequiny. I have no idea what that came off of. But it's interesting. short though. I won't add much to the skirt. Okay, that's a no. I don't think I have enough of that, but that's interesting. Just a little hint of pattern to add to the skirt. Oh, and I kind of like it tattered. It's got a little rip in the bottom here. All right, lift. Reapply. piece of it. No. Um, that's not going to let the red show through. No. I like the red. Oh, look, I have another piece. That way, a much bigger piece. I can put a little bit up here, too. Okay, I think it's this. Oh, no. Wait. I wanted this up here. That's super pretty. And I could continue that across the shoulder with a piece of ribbon. No, that's too big. Thin ribbon. I have velvet. I have this. This could take up and over the shoulder from here. Hmm. Okay, I have to really think this through, unfortunately, because I just remembered she has no arms. So I'm going to have to use flowers in here, too, to uh, camouflage. Oh, hold on. I have the solution. A shawl. So much fabric bunched underneath of it. Okay, this dry fit is getting out of control. If she gets a shawl, it's not going to be a bunch of fabric. It's just going to be a little piece. I do like how these two pair together. I think this section I will do in fast forward. My box of flower heads.
Okay, I think I have found an assortment of flowers that will work for me. Clean up my mayhem a little bit. Okay, so these are what I'm going to work with, I think. And I still need to decide if I want to sort of cut pieces of this and have them hanging like, like, uh, we call this the scarf skirts. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because this is just like a leftover scrap anyway, so I might as well cut pieces and just hang them in there. That way I can also control where her waist goes. Let me borrow a piece of this real quick. Remove. Wait, am I removing this extra fabric? No, I just need to get it to stay down. Which I can do with just a piece of this. I'll just establish the lower part of her waist. I'm going to do stupid the hot glue gun. I'm going to glue it instead of tying it, so if I need to undo it, I can. Just throw a little glue. Stick. Stick one side to it, and then the other. Alright, temporary waste. And then this. Cut this up in here. This and I will cram these together as tight as I have to once I get it where I want it. I think I decided I like the black leather around her waist. Okay, so what I need to do now is attach this to that, and I might need a little piece of wood. Hold on, <laughs> little piece of wood. Infinite uses for these little. I don't know what they call these. It's like the world's biggest popsicle stick. Okay. So, let me grab another glue stick because I'm probably going to need it. I'm going to load in a pile of hot glue right here. And I'm going to stick her to this. Okay. And I'm going to stick this on the back of here and try to stabilize those two together. But see, this is a little bit wider than I need it to be, so I'm going to trim that down just a hair. Alright. And I'll glue stick. This up because I need to put pressure on here. Oh, I hate to touch this, but I have to get that glue so it doesn't show. Okay, it's stuck there, it's stuck there, and I'm going to squirt some in here just to make sure that this. Hold on, I'm down in your hole. You're getting hot, so you should go without a fight. Uh, Middle tool, middle tool, middle tool. There we go. Push that in there and make sure it's stuck. Okay, so that right there will stabilize these two together without making it stick up too much. All right, and now we have a little more fabric than I need, so I'm going to trim. Did you pull off yet? No, I'm going to wait so I can pull that off of there. A little more fabric than I need. I just need enough so it comes around the back of here. Okay, sorry. I'm going to glue this to there. I don't want anything under that board. I don't want it not wanting to glue down. Because now it is the primary thing. It's going to hold this together. And at some point, I'm going to go back and do a whole bunch of this right here. Oh, God, that glare. Hold on, let me see. Is the white balance turned on? No. Let's see. Okay, white balance. Help me out here. Oh, yay. Much less glare. Okay. I don't know why it defaults to off. And it's such a useful thing that it helps to hold 
the, the light at a certain level instead of letting it glare white like that. The shifting isn't attractive, I get it, but when you can't see anything at all, it's even worse. Okay, so again, you want to make sure that whatever you're going to glue down to your uh, piece of wood or your canvas or your shadow box or whatever is staying flat on the back. Okay, guys, I need a place for you to sit. There we go. And again, on this side, I have a little more fabric than I need, so I'm going to trim some off and put some glue up under here and pin that down so that I know for sure it's going to stay put. Um, cut that off as well. Okay, coming together, starting to look like a three-quarter torso here. And I might want this a little less flat right here. I think I glued that down, but I can fix that, or I can embellish. Well, wait a minute, hold on. I'm thinking two steps ahead, and I haven't taken that first step. I was going to add these little overlapping scarf pieces. And I want it to look tattered, like the dress is ripped, because it's an old, old, old dress. That's why I like this red fabric, because it's a little bit faded. <clears throat> and I may put some, um, like, coffee type material or maybe even watered down brown paint and, and make it look like it's a little bit dirty. What did I do with that? Oh, there. No, that's the piece that didn't want to cut. There's the piece. Remember, this is laying flat right now. It will not be flat. This is going to hang on a wall. So these will follow the normal pull of gravity and hang straight down the way they're supposed to. I won't have to argue with them once this is hanging on the wall. I need to put a point on that one. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to use the fabric tack for this because this is really thin fabric and it is going to burn me if I try to push this on with the hot glue. And because this won't get any wear and tear, as far as anyone picking it up and wanting to handle the doll around its waist, I don't have to worry too much about it um, unraveling or anything. So it should be fine with just a little bit of a tack with this fabric tack. Okay, that one's on top. I'm just putting a line of glue. I'm going to scooch that one. Over here, try to sort of tuck it under. Lots of little tendrils. And if you have squares, make them a point. All right, now we have two more, oh, one more, one more point to go in this hollow spot where there really isn't much interest. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so she's going to fit in there sort of like that. Oh, that really raised your arms up a lot, didn't it? Huh, more than I hoped it would. But that's okay. Like I said, I can just camouflage her shoulders not being there. Uh, or I can always make her uh, like a little bit of an arm for here. We'll see. Paper clay would be easy enough to do that with. So this is going to come up here and bunch together a little and this is going to go around her waist and push up and in. And I like the bigger section there. This is big pattern pieces. That makes a nice edge detail for the top. Where did this fall? Maybe come here and go across the shoulders nicely. I could tuck that under this red. I have to trim it off a little. 
Okay. So that's what I'm doing with that. All right. And we have to trim it down. this back in here. Oh, you need to go before. And attach this across the shoulder like that. Okay, I'm gonna do that with the fabric tack as well. I kind of like the idea of that bare shoulder look. Do one side and then the other. Straight line over and down. Okay. I need to turn it where I can see. fabric. Just trim that extra black out of there. Okay, now I like how that looks. Tuck that under there so it barely shows. I like this tattered edge. I might encourage that some more. And this waist in. Yeah, we definitely need to darken up that fabric. And you need to go below the rest. Go. Hit the waistline. And then I guess we will regather you so you sit where you're supposed to. Okay, now. And I can leave a little tiny bit extra, but not much. Because it's gonna fit in, in the space in the space next to this wood. Oh god, can I back this up any? How high can I get you? Okay, because i got to keep rotating this around so I can see what I'm doing. And I don't want to keep making it where you can't see. Even if I eventually, another glue stick, if you're wondering. All right, I'm going to come right here. Stand on the front face. You just push yourself right in there. Good. Now each layer is going to build up, so you want to be careful what you're doing. And always watch that the stuff you're gluing to isn't gathering something that you wanted in a different spot. I needed to, oh, ha, 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 I just touched that to the tip of my finger. That did not feel good. I need to get a little more glue under this fabric here. Make sure it's going to stay down in the Okay. Push that down again. Oh, it's still hot. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> okay. That was sketchy. Okay, now. Looking good so far. And this, I like, gives just a little extra texture to the waist. Now, do I want to add these cute little lacy bits that I cut off of the other part? To here. No, nah, makes it look like a bra. I don't want a bra. Uh, uh oh, I lost the captain. That's not good. See what it does? Well, I guess you've probably seen it too. It has a mind of its own. I love fabric tack for a million different purposes, but if you turn your back on it for a minute, it makes giant glue buggers. All right, that's all I need to pin that over there. Okay. Oh, wait, did I do that? Yep, I did. I don't want it like that. I want it like that. I want it to look like it's going to be able to go as... There we go. Okay. Ta-da! Now, I have some little flowers that could come here. No, don't like that. I don't think it's 
go off of here real quick. Eh. Not to do it before. It's always better to put hot glue on a metal appliance or utensil or whatever you're using because you can peel it off real easy. I made the mistake once of using these little tools that I had that were wood. It ruined them. Completely ruined them. I was not happy. All right, I don't know if I'm going to need those. Let me set them aside. And I want to add more frou-frou here. Maybe that's what it needs. It's too flat. It needs more frou-frou. So this is what I call frou-frou. Let's see. I have a little more red fabric. Okay, so I just grab some of the fabric and I bunch it up like this. And then I'm just going to cut V into it with it folded. Oh, and, well, I didn't mean to do that much, but that gives me this, which I can then gather together to add to that. Off you go. Okay, pull that through just to gather it. Yeah, that's much more interesting looking. Okay, do I want to just tuck it into this leather band? The belt, I mean. I'm gonna go from there. I think so. I think that's. I'm gonna dry fit it down in here and see how I like it. Interesting. Looks pretty interesting. It's a little, maybe, scoot you over a little and add this too. Oops, too far. And you. So I need to push this in here, just a hair, scooch a little of that pleat over there, tuck it in to the belt, and then, yeah, she looked like she had a hard night. <laughs> the dress is tore up. Okay, I'm going to come under here and put some glue on the top of the belt. Careful. Right, and tack this to the belt. Okay, and then I'm going to come behind it and tack it on the inside to this other piece of fabric. That's the nice thing about this not being a full doll. I don't have to sew these things together because I don't need it to be something anybody's going to be touching, worry about it coming apart. I can just glue all these bits together and they're going to stay. Okay, now I need to get some glue down in here to get this waistband, this belt rather, to lay flatter than it currently is. All right, go in there. There you go. And I'm going to tack this right here. Tack that one there. That one there. And this one over here. looks cool. If it's something you pull on it and it moves, throw some more glue under it. Like that. Alright, and I don't need this thread anymore. So I'm just going to glue it down and cut it off. Make sure you glue it down though, just in case it decides to unravel. Put that over there. And there's a thread on the other side somewhere.
good start, good start. Now, which side is up? This side is up. Does it need that? Yes, I think it needs that. This is cringeworthy, I know, but I'm cutting it. It was a leather headband that somebody gave me that uh, I have never been able to wear because I have a big head, apparently, and it was just way too small for my head. All right, now, little leather thingy I'll deal with you later. Okay, you're going to go here and then come over there. Yeah, I like that. See, I like different texture, even when it's black on black, because it, in person, looks amazing with all the texture, whereas sometimes uh, black fabric on other black fabric, black lace on black fabric, doesn't show in pictures, but eventually this is going to be in someone's home, hopefully, that's always the goal, and they're going to see it and be amazed by all of the, the texture that's going on. And she's very neutral right now. She doesn't have the aging yet, which I might just do a really watered down paint. I've tried the coffee before and it looked okay, but it, it wasn't my favorite. The fabric can get stiff from the paint if you don't water it down enough, but um, time for a sip of coffee. That'll do. Um, if you don't water it down enough, but it's still, it, with her, even if it has like a, a little bit of a crustiness to it, I am not going to complain because she is supposed to be, you know, Day of the Dead. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue these two. Because I'm pretty sure that's where they're going to live. But, no, well, maybe not. Because I think I like these two red flowers in the corner here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is grab this material. Make a little ruffle for under her skirt. Which is pretty simple. I'm just going to cut a long strip of fabric. <coughs> and gather it like we did that. I'm gonna, it's going to be a doubled. Because I want it to be kind of thick. So it's going to be about... Uh, two-ish inches of fabric. And I'm going to go Okay, so it's not something you have to be super accurate with, but you want it to be about two inches wide and 12, maybe 14 inches, and that one was not even close to equal, so off it goes. Okay, and need needle and thread again. Maybe I'll use the skinnier needle this time. That one was hard to push through. I'm going to grab it right in the middle. And I can definitely speed through the gathering for you. I'm just grabbing little bites of the fabric and gathering it together so I can get a fluffy little almost can-can skirt bottom going on here. And I'm not tying it or anything. I just want to spread it evenly across the length that I want it to be. Sorry, bring you out so you can see the bottom. Is that little ruffle sticking out? I think it's a bit of hair, but it's sheer, so I don't need it. Okay, if I can, why do you keep looping it? There we go. Alright, so far so good. I'm going to pull some bone here. I shouldn't have enough hair. square in the middle zone. Okay. Now back to the flowers. Two big ones. The scraps go in the trash can real quick and they're going to be all over my floor. Like that one. Okay. Center you. You're going to move over there. You're going to move over there. flower, then skull. That's a thought. Or make it out here in front of the skirt. So many options. It's so fun. Okay. I definitely like them in that bottom corner. I could switch to or cut the thing off so it's shallow like that. Yeah, maybe I have to cut another skull down because it's not wanting to go back in there. Yeah, it'll go. I can glue it. It's fine. It'll go. Okay, I definitely want these two flowers in this bottom corner. So, time for... Oh, wait. Can I do that? No, I can't do that yet. Okay. Okay, brain. I got excited. Hold on. I've got a step. She's not glued down yet. I can't glue her down until I put her hair on. So, let's do that. 
also need to get rid of this thread. So put the needle back. Da -da. Okay, now I have black hair on her, which is just a piece off the pelt because you don't need a lot of hair. So you can take that, you can fold it over on itself like that and glue it. And then when you put it on here, can you see the part line? Nope, neither. So you're going to have sweet black hair. And I kind of like how long it is, letting it sort of flow across the shoulders like that hides the edge of the shoulders. And then the flowers are going to go right up against her head. So, yeah, I think I like the black hair. So I'm just going to, like I said, cut a little piece of the fur. This is the pelt. This is Tibetan sheep fur. And this is the pelt. I cut the whole pelt right through the pelt. It's got a little hooky thing over here, but I'm not going to worry about it. And then you're just going to throw some glue in here like this. <laughs> Always this glue. I put acetone in it at least four times to thin it. I think it's because this lid isn't like sealing as ooh, tightly as it needs to be. Okay, and then just fold it over on itself and pinch it off. Try not to get the hair caught in the glue. You want as much of that thickness as you can get. Okay, and now you're going to make sure that you have a nice part, that it's not uh, uneven, and it's a straight line. Make sure that part is on both sides straight. Okay, nope, that's still not straight. Straight from there over to here. The straighter you make this line, the better looking this is going to be when you stick it on her head. Okay, and because her head is going to be flat on the back, you want to be careful where you place it. Over here, so you can see the top of her head. And see what I'm doing. Make sure you got it in the middle. And this is going to get glued down to her head just on the crown part of the head. So oh the other thing is you want to peel the hair forward. You want the hair going forward and look at which side has the thicker hair. So I'm noticing this one is thinner on one side than the other. But you want the hair to go forward like this, so that when you stick it down, the hair sweeps around the face like that. Nice and thick and full. And you want to glue it with the hair sweeping forward. So put a good bit of fabric tack down, but keep it to the back of the head. Because it's gonna pick it's gonna get all over the hair. And then you can move the hair piece forward without having to end up with glue in places you don't want it. Okay, so keep your part. The hair is moving forward, and then you're going to just lay it into the glue, like that, and stick it down. Don't move it around too much. Just try to hold it still. And if you have too much glue, coming out from underneath. Just kind of grab hold of it, lift it back a little bit, and push that glue back up under the hair. And let it stick. Now with this, because she's going to have flowers stuck all over her head, this is perfect. So you're still going to get this full, beautiful head of hair. I'm going to come over here with a little bit more glue and make sure that that pelt part is stuck to the head. And you may have to hold it for a minute while it cures so it doesn't let go. And then you got this pelt flopping around it on the side of her head. And you don't want hair behind the head getting in the way of it laying flat. So it's another good reason why this works really nicely for a flat piece, something in a shadow box or anything along those lines. It puts a whole lot of hair where you want it real quick. And you don't have to um, go one weft at a time, which is another method that I've used and demonstrated, but I'm showing you this one as an example of something else that you can try. You, you don't have to pick one or the other. Why not learn how to do all of them? 
but instead of me doing a video where I just demonstrate a bunch of different ways to put hair on, I just decided that each time I do hair, I'll just do it a different way, and then you can choose what's right for your project. Okay. Now, if you're seeing scalp, which you can on this, two things you can do. Um, the easiest one is to get some black alcohol ink and darken up the pelt color. This reminds me I need to get more black alcohol ink. Okay. Just spread the hair a little. Because the pelt, even though the hair is dyed black, the pelt is like a gray. See, and just like that, it vanishes. I like that. Okay. So here we have our hair. It's on looking sleek and gorgeous and I may let it droop over one shoulder but not both and I might let it droop over both we shall see if she's on the background I don't think the thinness of it will matter so much down here yeah the thinness of it kind of disappears it is thin because there's no hair behind her head but that is just how it is okay now she needs to come down here and be careful with this face because that hair is going to go frizzy really quickly if you're not careful okay you just you want to try not to touch it too much if it does get really frizzy you can take just a little bit of hair gel and uh, this one side's longer than the other that's what's messing my brain up all right what do i do okay and Red, little red flowers, where are you? I'm going to put little red flowers and little black flowers, or are they just not going to show? They might show, probably not though. Okay, so we're going to go with the red and the white, or the red and the orange, or the red and purple. Let me think of purple with this, not much. Okay, so red, I have one, two, three, four, where are you? Five, and then I have this kind of orangey one, and this little orangey one, so maybe I will go with them, because they're softer, like this color. Oh, I have another one of those. And, oh yeah, they look a little faded. Like they've been dead a while. Okay, so I'm going to get the flowers in her hair. A little orange. We'll see. Let's turn it around. Put it away. I can go on with the black ribbon. Okay, I'm not using hot glue because it's going to be too messy. You are the middle, but you go in last. Shoot, I'm going to have to use hot glue on it. All right, we'll put the hot glue on it over here. Try not to leave a trail. There's an orange. Am I recording? Yeah. Just had a horrible thought. Did I not turn it back on? There's another orange. And you were in the middle. I'm going on top once I get the other one on. And now you. And I am gluing these to her hair, not to the background. I'm gluing them to her hair because she still needs to be able to lift up out of here because I have to glue her down. Okay, now the yellow one. And there, like that. Alright. And this one. What are we doing? We're hanging up in the hair. Okay. I'm going to take these little barb things off the back side. 
and off the front on there. So I gotta get it to slide up in there a little bit. Put glue on there. Turn things around. And I'm gonna tuck it in back here and twist it into the hair. And now for the black flower. It's gonna go up here. Oopsie. Let it go too soon. There, it's gotta go forward. And then this little red doohickey is going to go in behind it. Kind of like when you're doing beading on jewelry. When you use the big tray and you lay the beads out before you start stringing them up to make sure that um, everything goes the way it is supposed to. Alright, where's that hair coming from? The other side. Okay, that explains why it wouldn't go away. Okay, so that looks like a full headdress of flowers. I like that. Okay, now I'm going to spin it around. Cap back on the blue. Oh, sorry. And I'm going to repeat this same process. Take the yarn out of the way. Come on, red one. What is your problem? You are not glued in, so why are you not moving? Oh, because the orange one. That orange one is glued in. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to glue this one in on this side. Right here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to lift this just to make sure we're not actually making contact back there because that would ruin everything at the moment. What, if anything, can I do about how long this is? Okay, what did that do? Oh, cut some of these nubbies off. Hot glue. Make sure this hair is going down straight. Stick that back there in the hair. There we go. And the little black flower went. I don't know. I got another one. Oh, there it is. It got caught up in the hair. Okay. A little glue on the black flower. And it goes. Ah! Darn hot glue spider webs. Okay. Goes more forward. <laughs> okay, what a mess. Oh, sorry, I should have done that before. All right, enough hot glue. Messy, messy, messy. Okay, now for this little red one. And that's gonna come and go in here like that. stuck no we are not stuck looking good i like it okay all right looking good okay so for decorating the rest of this background here i have some jewelry and some different things that i was thinking about sticking in but i'm also going to add some smaller flowers along the edge i think i'm trying to make sure oh poopy i forgot this yellow one I noticed it before I shuffled things around too much. There we go. Oh yeah, I like this. I like the symmetry. It's not necessary, but I like to at least attempt to get things symmetrical. Okay, so this is how. Pretty good. Um, I have some big red flowers here, not the same size exactly. I have one of those. I have one of these. <coughs> and. White flower for here and here. I think maybe they should get smaller as they go down. So we'll do that and that. The skulls go up here. And I have these purple flowers. But I don't know how I like the purple. I may have to dig through the box again. I do have these pink flowers. Oh, and a little orangey one. A spare orangey one. Necklace? No. That was just a fun little thing, but I only have one. Mm. Oh, I thought those two matched, but they do not. Okay, I do have two more of these. I can build this up a little down here. Oh, there's no color in the top corner. 
like that. I can maybe there's some pink in there. I'm looking for pink. Mm, not a fan, but could be alcohol ink to the rescue. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> burgundy. Although I think I used most of that burgundy up on a piece. Let's see if that's going to even make any difference. Looks bloody. Huh, maybe. We shall see. What do I think of how that looks? Not a fan. I wonder. Let's try this. Get some rubbing alcohol here. Nice big pile of it. Let's see if we can't spread that ink around a little. That's gonna do it. Better. Okay. I definitely need to restock my flowers, but this will get me through on this one to get it finished. I wonder if I could use a half a flower. What a weird little button that has on there. Neat. Make a fun hat for something. <laughs> How about you? Can I cut you in half? Hmm. Be really hard on my scissors here. <laughs> That's interesting. What do you do when you run out of flowers? You cut one in half and stick it to the side. <laughs> I don't hate that. <laughs> I should, but I don't hate that. Maybe I'll put it down here though. Maybe I'll even put it down here. Oh, that's fun. Yep, I'm going to put it on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to hot glue this to this so they will stay together. Okay. We're going to just stick this in here in this bottom corner because it has nowhere else to be now that I have cut it in half. Okay. Never actually cut a flower in half before, so that was interesting to see how well that worked. And it kind of flows along with the, the rest of it is cut off for the moment concept. Yeah, I can live with that. I can. Even though there's kind of a piece of her missing. Let's see. I also have more of this sparkly stuff that I could grab some of. Let's see. God, I'm going to glitter everywhere again. I could come in here, maybe along the edge, just for a little bling. What do we think? I could up with that. Thin it out a little. Stick the flower in. Maybe even come between. What do you think? Mm, no, I like to cut it behind it. Mm, stand up, little flower. I want you behind there, not on top of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That'll work. I'm definitely short some flowers, but I think if I... Oh, I have an idea. Let's wet the flower with the alcohol first. And then come in with the marker. Nope, wrong end. God. Just jumped right out of my hand. color there. Rubbing alcohol and spread it around. Okay. That one's definitely darker. Let's use a little red to add to the pink that it's given me. Darker. Maybe just dry darker. 
Yeah, I think that's what it is. It just dried darker. This one's still wet. Okay. Coming down the sides. All right, let's start with this little skull. This hangs here, so I want the skull there. I want it between that tassel and this tassel. Same at this side. I have that one, that one, and this one, so this one's going to go right there. Now, if the glue shows too much and you see it and that bothers you, just grab yourself some black paint. Oh, come on. Grab yourself some black paint and go in and touch it up. The part that shows, I mean. Okay. There's a side. They stay on the outside. Okay, you. And you. And you. And you. I have a dark... Oh, there it is. So I also have a red one. Oh, wait. Maybe it should be smaller as they go up. So they don't get lost under this thing here. Oh, crap. Nope, I'm thinking I have more than I do. You belong over here. You belong over there. And you, and it's smallest. And you, then you. Oop. You, then you. Then you. Does the symmetry look good? Or does it look terrible? Oh, she's going to need jewelry of some sort. I have lots of rhinestones. I can definitely find her something. And I have other things that I can pull out to go with her as well. What else could go here? Another skull? Hmm. No, that's too heavy. Uh, what else do I have? What else do I have? So much stuff. But what will look good on this? I don't know how many skulls are going to be necessary for this. But I don't like them. Another one there. Look weird. What about here? Yeah, that looks weird. <laughs> oh, I can drive myself crazy with this. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. I have these wings that I wanted to try to use on this. Do I still want to use them? Hmm. I'll be back. I gotta go get an in-house opinion. Okay, I know this is a very, very, very busy piece, but I think that I love it. <laughs> I think that I love it, so, and my hubby liked it, so I think this is it. Now I just have to glue all this stuff together and decide if I want to try to stick a little arm in here or just leave it as is. I mean, it's a bust. It's not meant to be a full doll. But I just thought those wings, <laughs> those wings have been in need of a home for such a long time. And this gives them one. I think with everything else, this is enough. And I have some like cool jewelry type stuff that I'm going to incorporate in here too. So that is going to have even more sparkle. And this is going to look cool on somebody's wall. It's going to look cool on my wall for a little while. And then eventually I will run into the right person who's going to love it. And it's going to go home with them. Okay, it's hot glue time. Need another stick. Uh, almost. I'll stick it in there, anywho. Okay, so top flower. One. I'm going to actually stand up to do this because I want them at least somewhat symmetrical. Two. Three. Four. Hmm. Should I? Come on, get in your hole. There you go. Five. Six. Web 
much. Darn hot glue. I've lost count. Oh well, stick that one in there. Like that. And bushy one. And I'm going to glue those to her back so when she goes down, they go with her. Okay, now glitter, 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 glitter to the other side. have a mess to clean up. Those little flower tabs are all over the place. I wasn't even paying attention where they were popping and pinging to. Okay, now wings. This one goes here. So I glued, sorry about that, I need to see what I'm doing. <laughs> I glued them to the back of this. Okay, let's see. Hopefully they won't keep it from laying flat. I can get it under things. Well, they're flexible, so it should be okay. All right, it will come down here some. There we go, down here. Watch against the bottom, because that's gonna help support you too. All right, get some of this glue off of me. And, big and it's better to put your hot glue oh sugar I'll put that right on the all right get on your side better to put a whole bunch in one spot and then you can do this start with this tip and make sure that it's going to stick because if it starts to get hard while you're trying to pull her more out, it's not going to stay stuck. And hold it. Hold it down while it cures. While it adheres to the... And I'm putting a fair bit of force here. And you're listening for the sound of it peeling away, which will sound like styrofoam cracking. And if it's doing that, then you go back and put pressure again. But I don't hear it. I don't know why hot glue always sounds like styrofoam cracking, but it does. Lift. Going nowhere. Okay, so we still have two skulls that are going to come and go in here on either side of her. Let's pull these tendrils up here that we're going to show. That's a lot of glue now. 
but I want to make sure this is not going to fall out. Oh, another glue stick. buried itself but that is okay I'm okay with that okay I found something that I think is really cool for her I just have to figure out how to get it where you can see it the way that it's going to look I'm going to prop this up just a little bit so this will hang this was a bracelet that I found in all this costume jewelry at the flea market one day and I thought boy that's interesting no idea what I would do with it, but now I'm thinking this is her necklace. See, if she's hanging, this is going to drape the way it's supposed to, but she's laying flat, so it's not draping. Everything's wanting to hang. So it's hard to show you what it's going to end up looking like. And I may take some nail polish and enamel these. Um, maybe red, black, red, black, or just make them all black so they stand out against her skin more. Or just leave them as they are. It's really hard to show you what it looks like. But I think that's going to be cool. I still have to gather maybe some more things to go around, maybe stuff on the background little some little jewelry pieces we shall see i also had an interesting idea um i might make just like a bendy arm and tuck it in here and bring it around so that it it looks like it's either tucked behind her oh that would work take it like this and make it look like it's tucked behind her or bring it in the front and have her hold one of these type of things like a little skeleton decoration. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make something like this, but with the, uh, the red fabric and the black fabric to mimic her arms and get it the right size. And then I will be back again. Um, coming back on this note, because it occurred to me that now that she is in place, I can take another piece of this fur and glue it in uh, behind her. Let me move all this stuff. I just made her the necklace. Save all my little bits for another piece. Okay, let's get you back in the frame here. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to part the hair so that I can cut two pieces here. And put on each side of her head. I don't need that much. I just need to fill in because it looks a little blank back there. You can see the, the back of her neck. I'm hoping I have this parted well. I don't. Could not be. Guess what? Just part the hair really nicely. Okay. The cut right along where you parted it. All right. Now I want another piece about the same size. Part the hair. And there will be loose hair no matter what you do. When you're dealing with the pelt, you cut the hair, you're going to have loose pieces come off. But you want to remove them now rather than trying to deal with them later when they're already on the doll. Okay, so this, you're just going to turn the ends in. You don't have to fold it completely in half. Just turn the ends in on each other like that and glue that. Out. Come out of your hole. Hmm. This is probably going to be longer than the hair that's on here if you glue it too low. So lift this up and get access to behind the head a bit. 
and try to put it in there. And I'm using the fabric tack, not the hot glue here, because I might need to reposition it. And the hot glue does not always let you do that. So you want to get this back in here as best you can behind the head. And that is going to fill in that area here at the neck. There we go. Isn't that nice? Lovely. So you can see, you can see the background on that side. There's not a lot of hair. You cannot see the background on this side because now there is all of the hair that you would want. Okay, repeat for this side. tweezers to get the hair back off of these lashes. <laughs> there we go. It's always hard to tell which side the hair is coming from when it crosses over the face like that. There it goes. Okay. Oh yeah. Much, much better. Much better. There's only so much hair you can get on the top of the head. And you don't want to overdo, but if it's not enough, that is a very quick way to remedy the problem. And if you want to, say, add a little highlight, um, that's easy to do too. You can take some red hair, or you can take, what do I have handy here? You can take white hair, for example. Take a very small section. I would not use this because it's not long enough, but you could add like your uh, little stripe like um, Willie Munster would have in there. Or you can use red hair and maybe come in underneath. That hair I just added could have been red. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any handy. It could have even been some of this brown hair here or whatever. So a lot of stuff you can do to change things up and make it look interesting. Here's a little, little piece of blonde hair. You can see I can stick that in there just to add a little bit of something different to the look so it's not just plain black hair. But that's totally up to you. I kind of like the black, which is a lot of color going on already, but just putting that out there as an option. And those I will save for another project. Um, and I'm going to make these arms. I am now convinced that she has to have a faked out arm in here. And I'm going to do that. Um, actually, I might as, might even be able to just use this wire. How long do I need it to be? It's going to come from here. Let's see. Yeah, that looks about right. She's not going to have hands. But about there. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to repeat that for the other side, too. Yeah. That'll do. Yeah, I'm just going to stick them in there just just till the, it has the look of something there. I think this was a flower stem. And when I grabbed it out of the flowers, I looked at it and I was like, you know, I don't have to make an arm arm. Oh, God, I'm being really cruel to these scissors. I should have used my pliers to cut that. Oh, well. Too late now. I wonder if chains hanging from her dress would look ooh yeah I like that I have to find some more aged chain though although if I go up to here or even here huh I gotta go pull out more chains because I kind of like the idea of the chains hanging down okay so this needs some red fabric off of that other thing let's see I think first I'm going to bulk it up with some black fabric. All right, I'm actually going to set this aside so that I don't mess anything up at this point. And I am just kidnapping some pieces off of this since it's already here. This was something I think belonged to my daughter maybe a long time ago. Oh no, I remember. I bought it for her and it was... Um, it was too small, never got worn. 
was stuck in a drawer for the last 20 something years and I decided at least not one I would put it to use. These are definitely not my fabric scissors. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna fold this. Fold it again. Fold it again. Strip one. Strip two and strip three. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this end and glue that to it. And then wrap down to the end. Again, and then start rolling back up the other way to the top. First layer, we need some of this red. I think I'm going to use the red. Huh, maybe some of that, mostly. Ooh, that's fun. I already have a piece of that cut somewhere. Hold on. That'll work. Don't need to hack any more pieces off of this for a while. <sighs> Alright, now put this one. Oh, sugar, hold on. Yep, I'm rolling this one wrong side out. Okay, let's try again. We're still sticky, we're still sticky. So we're gonna go around it one extra time. There we go. Now it's right. Down. Back again. Why did I do that? I guess I didn't put very much glue on there. with her shoulder. That's not very wide. Maybe I should bulk it a little bit more up top. I'm totally just baking this, so I just feel weird with it not actually having an arm. Same side, same side. Oh, am I doing it again? Good lord, this is hard to tell which side is which. Fatten it up a little. Why be boring? That is what I say. Have a little fun. Okay. Now, like this. And then back to the front. And then back. Let's go in front. And bring this over. Loose sleeve. And this is going to go up over her, sh her other arm. Okay, make a second one. Maybe this one on top of that one. Make sure they are lined up. Oh, come on. You? Oh, wait. Oh, you know what I did? Look what I did. I put both on the same arm. Ugh. Not firing on all cylinders here. Again, today, I see. It's okay. Just take your glue gun and heat that. And it'll go clear again. When you pull it off, it leaves the glue white. You just take your glue gun and the tip of it. And now it's clear again. Unless you touch it, it should stay clear. And it's going to be hidden under this, so. Okay, that one. Ah, that, yeah, sticky. They were literally on opposite sides of each other, so every time I try to push it over the other thing, it gets me again. Okay, I was going to fatten up the upper part of the arm, which is this part, right? This is just the underneath part. I don't know why I'm tripping about it. It's not going to show. That's why I chose the black fabric, because it's not going to show. I just want it to look a little thicker than it did. Because even if she has really skinny arms, they're not going to be that skinny. Okay, now let's see... <clears throat> Bring this in here like this. Arm. Light. 
Let's see if it even shows. And which side is which? I think there isn't a side. Like this. Wrap it around there like that. Something blee. It's not going to be the skeleton. It needs to be something blee. Something day to day, maybe, but I don't think the skeleton. Yeah, no, I don't like the skeleton. What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Oh, I know. One second. From the ju junk jewelry box, I have this neat thing. It can go in her hand, and the chains that are attached to it can just dangle. And it gives the illusion that she has an arm. Or, like I said, I can put the arms behind her. Like that. Am I making too long? I might have. I'll have to wing off. Yeah, that might be too long. Yeah, I'm gonna shorten it. Or bend that over like it's the wrist. Let me look at it. I'm going to throw some of this in there like it is a shawl, which will hide the connection between her and the shoulder. Or maybe I will use a fancier lace. I thought about putting to camouflage the. I just have to. Find the right piece. I'm so more secure. Yeah, this weird one with the mm. This one has beads on it. No. This one has silver. It's easy. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Okay, we'll that one with the you. There's nothing to do. Would you? That's it. Okay, but would you do to hide the gap? I think it might. Or should I use the same stuff from before and just add another layer? Where did the same stuff from before go? Right here. Another layer of the same stuff. Yeah, I think that's the one. Another layer of the same stuff. Just not rock scissors. For sure. Okay, get back in the box. YouTube. Okay, so I have to get these wingy dingies <laughs> back in place. Because if I don't do it now, they're done for. Those are staying put. These definitely came loose. Alright, this time I'm going to put the glue on the back of it and glue it to the backing here. Oops, too far over. Get over there. Oh, get in there. you pull, the longer the little string gets. Get that hot glue. Okay. Hmm. Another thought. If the color fabric in, or that uh, clay stuff, black, so it doesn't, the gap between the two doesn't stand out so much. So I can get in there. Ooh, yeah, that's already going to be a better transition. Is that the wrong? Yeah, that's the wrong side. You go over here. Mm. 
back to scissor abuse. Oh, come on, cut. That's too long. It's got to come off. There. Okay, how much of you do I need? It's just got to look like it's a little shawl, maybe. Okay, we're definitely using fabric tack. All right, hair. Come on. Ooh, shit. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Shoot. Lay the glue right over that. Right there. I'm going to stick this in the corner here and go around the shoulder there. And tuck a little glue here and tuck that underneath and glue it behind her. Just slightly. And let it stick out a bit like that. And this rough piece here, I'm just going to tuck into the armpit and make it go away. I don't like how it looks. There. Alright, now this hair goes up that way, out of the way. And we're going to repeat on the other side. Both the same? Yes. Both the same. Okay, I think that's got it. She has the look of arms. I'll come under here with the hot glue. Make sure it's not going to be a bubble to move around. Stick it down. Stick it down. What do you think? Think she needs a little, uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend on her wrist? I think so. I'm going to glue it on. These are actually vintage. The, uh, I think they came off of a, uh, a dress, a wool dress that I found at a thrift store that was moth-eaten and a total mess. It was heading for the dumpster, but it had this beautiful collar on it that I just could not see allowing that to happen. So I bought it, even though it was ugly, because I wanted this little trim that was on there. It was necklace on the thing, and I thought it was just too pretty. And then, like the cheap ones you see today, these are actually metal, and the studs in them are actually little glass crystal-y studs, probably rhinestones, painted with the gold paint on the back to make them look like diamonds, and they do sparkle very nicely. Well, she is completely finished now. I, um, I went back and I finished all my little tweaks and touches that I always end up doing at the end of a project. Let's make sure she's well lit but not too bright and I will pan down her so you can see the little bracelets were added later, the chains were added later. I did the, uh, the wash on the skirt to age it a little bit. I put a little on the top up here and I enameled uh, every other cross either black or red so they stood out a little bit more. And that is it. This project, oops, this project is complete and I'm gonna go get started on the next one which is this one here, which is already finished at this point as I'm doing my exit from the video. This is the next project, project number two, which I will be posting soon. And then project number three is this adorable shadow box. Just as cute as it can be. 
we'll go through the whole process of making each of these as well. Okay. Back us up. You can see the little group. And I thank you very much for watching. I would appreciate if you would leave a comment. It helps people find my videos. YouTube likes to share the videos that get a lot of likes and a lot of comments. So if you want to support my efforts in making these videos, that's all you have to do. Like and comment. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. See you next time.